we call it the hammer wall, which is a representation of our heritage and the great builders that helped dedicate their careers to building the foundation and making sure this company was successful. As we think about the future and the dynamic world that we live and work in, I always like to reflect back on our heritage and our legacy. And that really starts all the way back with my great-grandfather. I like telling my great-grandfather's story um, because not only is it help build the foundation of our history and legacy, but it is also the quintessential American immigration story. He immigrated from Sweden at age 18, came over on a ship, arrived at Ellis Island with nothing more than a toolbox and a handful of change, not speaking a lick of English and not exactly sure where he's going, but determined and passionate to make a better life. He honed his capabilities as a carpenter and then as a foreman and an assistant superintendent and superintendent. He found himself in his 40s running the largest project being built in the state of Minnesota, the University of Minnesota football stadium in 1923. And that was back in the days when you actually built football stadiums between seasons. But they did such a great job that the University of Michigan called them the next year and said, hey, we'd like to build a football stadium. So my great grandfather packed up his family and moved east to Ann Arbor to build the big house. And he said to his three boys at the time, sons, uh, this year education is not in the classroom. It's actually on the job site. And that was the start of my grandfather, Mort Senior's construction career. In 1954, he founds the business. So the story goes that my grandfather got a large hospital project. Well, he didn't have a superintendent to run the project. And my great-grandfather had retired long before. And my grandfather went to him and said, Dad, I need your help. He had to have someone he could trust running this key project. Because in those days, one bad project, and you fold up the tent and go home. There's no capital for failure. So for the next four or five years, my great-grandfather Nels actually worked for his son. While my grandfather started the business, it was really my dad who was the entrepreneur and the visionary for the business. My grandfather never expected the business to be anything more than a regional general contractor serving a handful of customers. But my dad had the big, broad vision. You know, growing up, I saw that passion and that vision at a very early age. You know, my childhood was playing out in the yard and my dad would show up and throw us pitches and have dinner with us. But by the time dinner finished, the drawings and the estimating tools were laid out on the dining room table. And he ran the business during the day and he estimated by night. And back then, he and my mom had everything on the line. They were guaranteeing personally the performance of the company. That included the house and the car, and we joke, maybe even the kids. Um, but that's what it took. I don't think we'll ever be able to fully appreciate what that was like to put it all on the line every single day. And I remember my dad telling a story of finding an error in his estimate where he knew he'd made a mistake. He had not calculated the labor it was gonna to take to get the brick and the block from the truck onto the scaffolding. So what does my dad do? He, every day, leaves the office at 5.30 or 6. He goes to that job site, and he personally carries the brick and the block up to the scaffold. So when the masons show up in the morning, they're ready to go. It's such an amazing example of commitment and passion and personal responsibility. My parents were really wise. They never once, when I was growing up, talked to me about coming into the family business. They told me two things. 
One, find your passion, and two, work hard at what you do. You need to know that you're here building your career because it's what you want to do as the family leader of a privately owned business. There's a tremendous sense of responsibility and stewardship. So somebody from the media asked me what's going to change. And as I thought about that, our strategy will change and adopt to the changing industry and economic environment we're in. But that concrete foundation on which we stand of values, culture, those things are timeless. Those will always remain the same. We've been very purposely diversifying our business for more than three decades. Not only are we expanding in terms of the types of markets and industries that we're participating in, one of the things I'm most excited about is what we're doing to broaden the service offerings that we provide. We're putting the pieces together to help us reinvent how the industry works from concept through operations and maintenance. Our commitment to being a leader in that and transforming how we conceive of, design, procure, prefabricate, assemble, maintain and operate facilities and structures is going to look a lot different 10 and 20 years from today than it does right now. I mean, just think of the things that we get to do, whether it's putting a shovel in the ground for an ER expansion or doing the ribbon cutting at a big stadium. We get to participate with our customers and our communities in these transformative events. People are so excited and enthusiastic and we get to be there, right at their side. Making that dream and vision become a reality, there is no more exciting place to be.